This is the ROCK R3 Pro V2 LiDAR system, 3D mapping camera mounted to my car. And this is the 3D data set it captures while it's driving. And today we're comparing the old school bubble level and measuring tape on our 3D LiDAR data on these ADA accessibility ramps. Now to put it simply, to make the ADA compliance happy, we gotta measure some distances here and some slopes. Now ADA compliance is a big deal. How big of a deal you ask? Well, the city of Los Angeles lost $1.4 billion in a single lawsuit, and that's not the only one. That's why we're gonna test a faster, more efficient way of doing it today using the ROCK R3 Pro V2 LiDAR system on a car. But first, let's do it the old school way. So I just took a bunch of measurements actually on that flare and the slope, because what I wanted to do is I wanted to see some repeatability. So I took about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different measurements on that flare, a bunch on the running slope, and a bunch on the other flare, just so I can get a little distribution of uh, how accurate these measurements are. And that was only one ramp, a long time. Or I got a better way. Woohoo! All right, well, it was that sad easy to get the data. When we go back to the house, compare notes what we got in the field versus we got on the laser. Let's check it out. Now we have our notes from the measurements I took out in the field and we have our 3D data set. Let's jump in and take our first look at that 3D data and then start comparing our measurements to the measurements in the 3D data. Here is that 3D data set. This is a 3D point cloud and every single dot you see here is an accurate measurement of the real world. Now we can do a few cool things here. Like one, we see this white line, that's actually where that camera drove. That's the trajectory of the camera. And these blue dots, well, we can click on that and we can expand and see a high resolution photo of the entire area we were looking at. So we can begin doing visual inspections here. Also, that same photo colorized the point cloud. So we can actually turn this into RGB and see a colorized point cloud here. I like to look at it over here in the intensity gradient view because it's more crisp on the actual features I want to see. Let's take a look at a few other features of this data set that I always check when I look at 3D data. I want to see how accurate it represents things with 90 degrees. This is typically kind of hard for a lot of things actually. So here's a curb, and I just want to look at this curb profile. And to me, this looks pretty darn good actually. Just the fact that we drove past this and we're able to see this 90 degree angle in the top of the curb where the sidewalk's at, and then the front of it, and the gutter. And the other cool thing is we can actually turn this into an elevation view. So I can come over here and turn this into elevation. And here we can actually start seeing where the flow of water would go. So you can see where green's at and how it gets blue over here. So the water always is gonna flow into that gutter along the side of the road and then down this way and keep going until you hit something like this, which is a storm drain. And I can verify, is that a storm drain? By clicking on the blue dot and seeing right here in the, video, the photo. Boom, there it is. That in fact is a storm drain. All right guys, enough of looking at cool things in 3D data sets. Let's take a look at those measurements and see how well they check off. So I'm gonna come over here to our ADA accessibility. Let's turn on our intensity and start looking at some of the numbers we measured. So the first up, let's take a look at that left hand flare slope. So if I click on my measurements, I'm going to see that my left flare slope is this measurement I took right here. And you can see I just grabbed a couple points on the top and bottom of this slope here. And I'm getting a measurement of 4.42 degrees. Now, if I look at my notebook here and see what I measured in the real world, I actually took many measurements along this slope because I just thought one wasn't enough. Because I just want to see statistically, does this look significant? So I got 4.42 there, and then on my left flare, I got 5.05, 4.55, 4.3, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 
4.05, 5.05, 4.8, and 4.4. So I got the highest was 5.05 and the lowest was 4.05, about one degree difference in all my measurements I took. And this is about 4.42. So that puts it pretty much right in the middle of all those measurements. Let's go ahead and look at a few of the other ones. Now for the running slope, I measured 5.98 degrees. And then in the real world, I measured 5.9, 5.95, 6.05, 5.6, 5.85, 6.0, 5.95, and 5.35. So that would be the highest was 6.05 and the lowest was 5.35 and ours was 4.98. Most of them actually kind of hover around that 5.9 to 6.0. So I'd say this is looking pretty good for the 3D data. Let's look at the right hand flare. So this right flare slo slop <laughs> slope, I got 5.88. And in the real world, I got 5.9, 5.7, 5.85, 5.6, 4.95, 6.85, and 4.9. So the highest was 6.85 and the lowest was 4.9, but most of them actually were 5.7, 5.9, 5.85. And that's right around our 5.88 number that we got from our 3D data set. And then finally, I did this cross slope here. And for the cross slope, I got a 0 0.63 degrees. I only took one measurement of this in the field. I got 0 0.5. Uh, likewise, I only got one measurement here on this one. This is the counter slope grade. And I got 5.38 here and then 5.2 in the real world. So guys, I think all of these check out pretty darn well. I'm gonna zoom out and just show you guys the data set one more time, but it looks like it works pretty well, but I'm not an expert. Maybe you are, maybe you are someone that does this for a living and every day you're checking these compliances and you see these numbers and you go, oh, that totally works. All I know is I have a bubble level digital one with 0.1 degree accuracy and I'm measuring it compared to my 3D data and I'm getting a good feel for how accurate the 3D data is compared to that bubble level. But if you think this is awesome and you have some comments on it, please leave some comments in below. Uh, give me some feedback, maybe something else I'm not thinking about, I should be checking. But leave me some comments. Uh, and if you guys like the video, like it, share it, subscribe to us, and I'll see you here next time here on Indiana Drones. Cheers.